Hello, chess lovers, Soren here, and in this video, I want to share with you an amazing game which the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal played against Armenian chess grandmaster Karen Grigorian. This game was played in 1982 in Yerevan. Tal had white pieces and he opened up with English opening e5 by Grigorian, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6. Four knights variation is on the board. Bishop b4, knight d5, and a5. Other alternative is bishop c5, which is a more popular try, but in the game we see a5, and now white will try to prove as if this a5 was a loss of precious time. Castle and kingside by both sides followed, e3, bishop goes back on c5. As already white wants to play d4, in that case black bishop can find itself on a very awkward position, that's why Gregorian moved it back on c5, b3. Knight takes d5, c takes d5, knight b4. So the idea hidden behind knight b4 is that now black wants to go for an exchange on d4 and not allow queen takes d4 because knight c2 can follow and in this case white is getting doubled pawns on the d5. But proving that this is a weakness is not so easy, you know. White has a nice bishop pair. Uh, space advantage and can now harass black knight which is placed awkwardly rook e8 well c6 is better and then black queen can land on uh, b6 in the game we see rook e8 a3 knight a6 so now black should lose a precious time in order to find a fitting square for this knight b4 knight goes back on b8 b takes a5, b takes a5, rook e1, a4. Another time consuming move, playing knight d7 and then bringing the knight on f6 is better, but in the game we see a4 and there comes queen h5. Already from this move on white has a clear advantage and is starting to create serious problems for his opponent. Now if knight d7 then already is too late, bishop g5 can follow. Gregorian played bishop d7 and there comes bishop e4. g6, black is neutralizing the threat but is uh, weakening the dark squares around black king. And now yeah, bishop g5 can be a threat, black played queen f6. But anyways, bishop g5 followed and... Queen takes d4, black is winning this pawn, but who cares about it, after queen h4, this time the threat is bishop f6, followed by queen h6, queen g7, checkmate. That's why, after queen h4, black was forced to move back the queen on this g7 square. Like we have a fianchetto of a queen, right guys? Yeah, I call this a fianchetto of a queen, a very unpleasant position, of course. Bishop h6, queen h8, and at this point you can pause the video and try to find Tal's next move. Ready? Uh, in here the magician from Riga made one of the most sparkling moves in his career and played bishop f5. How do you like this beauty, guys? White wants to trade off the rooks and switch into the game this rook. While on the other hand, black cannot uh, activate this rook and after the exchange of rooks, the 8th rank is becoming very vulnerable. g takes f5 can't be played because of queen g5, and yeah, after bishop f5, it's difficult to give black an advice. If rook c8, then queen e7 can follow. And black is like in Tsuk Tsavang, you know? Uh, also, Tsuk Tsavang can appear on the board after the exchange of rooks, and again, black is in trouble. In the game after bishop f5, a queen c3 was made by Grigorian, and rook takes e8 check. Bishop takes e8, rook c1, the rook was under attack, queen e5, and white queen is penetrating the 8th rank. Black's position looks hopeless. And I really like the way this bishop stands on uh, f5, you know. Uh, g takes f5, finally Grigorian accepted the peace sacrifice but resigned after a marvelous move by Tal. Can you find the winning move? Ready? Well I find it really very beautiful. After this subtle king f1 move, black resigned. 
And the last piece, the king is coming to support the rook. After rook e1, uh, black can no longer survive. At this point, resignation followed. If knight d7, then you are uh, losing your rook. And here is a line uh, showed by Tal, you know. If bishop b5 check, then king g2. And the rook is untouchable because of queen f8 checkmate. That's why after this spectacular king f1 move, resignation followed. Uh, by the way, if you remember earlier, we have already seen a similar idea where the king supports the rook in order to jump into the game. It was a game played between Carlsen and Vashe Lagroff in 2017. In that game, Carlsen found a very interesting way of switching his rook into the game. Here is what he played. First brought the rook on h1, and then king f1, and now, yeah, rook g1 can be a nice threat. All in all, both ideas I find really beautiful and hope that you enjoyed Tal's game a lot. Probably I should also cover the above mentioned game as well. Now, in the end, a beautiful chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video.